Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to the Sunday video. My name is Gardner and this is my co-host Lila. Um, here we are talking about some stuff that I wasn't planning on talking about today, but I think it's important to talk about. This is part one of a two-part show that I'm going to basically be doing on facts, figures, statistics, and that sort of thing for my show that I put out last year, last season. You know, what does doing a video every day for a year mean? Like, what do you get from that? You know what I'm saying? Like, what are the, what are the kind of numbers you can expect? And I'll be going into everything from views to subscribers gained to likes and dislike ratios. Um, and then that's going to be part one. You want some coffee? I'm just kidding, you're a bird, you can't have coffee. For those of you who don't know, season two actually started on Friday. You might be wondering then where's the video? It's gone. It got pulled by Warner Music Group and for those of you who didn't see my video where I discussed what happened, click the card uh, which should be displaying up here. It'll also be linked at the very end of the episode. Last season, I uploaded a video every day for a year. And it wasn't just like I uploaded a video, I wrote a song to go with it too. So most days, in fact, I think 99% of the time, with the exception of like Christmas and my birthday and New Year's, I actually uploaded a video and a song every day for a year. So what we're about to do is take a look at what the analytics look like. So here, here it is. So I started uploading on 820, which would be August 20th, 2016. And I stopped uploading for that season on August the 19th, 2017. And for those of you who can't count, that's 365 days, not missing a day. And here are the final numbers. I got 190,000 views. I had 399,000 watch minutes. I had an average view duration of two minutes and six seconds, and I gained about $94.64, which makes sense. If you take my CPM and you divide my number of views by the CPM, you roughly get an average of $95, $100. So for those of you who are like, oh, I'm going after some sick YouTube money, I'm gonna go get myself, um, you know, uh, I'm gonna go get a nice car and this isn't gonna do it for you because what you have to consider is that you have to upload consistently good quality content every single day and you have to get a couple thousand to a million views on all of those videos in order to make YouTube money. So let's take a look at the views. So this is the number of views that I accrued over the course of a year and you can see there's definitely a trend, right? It's mostly a flat line until we hit a major video on the 25th of October and I got 6,000 views all of a sudden. But for the majority of the first two or three months I was uploading, I got around 100 views, maybe 150 views a day. And that stayed the same, literally, until around the turn of the year when I started to get around maybe 300 views, 400 views a day, then back down to 200, then back down to 100. And then it plateaued a while back to my original starting numbers, which was pretty scary. And then all of a sudden around May, things started to pick up. There, there's a big thing that happened in May, okay? There's a big thing that happened in May. All right, so at the very tail end of May, I gained a whole bunch of subscribers, and that put me at 1,000 subscriber mark. Now, that's a big deal, and I think that shows that YouTube's algorithm doesn't really take channels seriously until they hit the 1,000 um, number. I switched it to a monthly view, and now what you can see is that around May, things started to pick up a little bit the amount of views started to roll in and the amount of subscribers gained started to roll in too. And things really haven't started to pick up until super recently. So I started out with an initial subscription count of 30 people. And that's just because I put out a video a long time ago with my friend Lucas Sams in 2009 and someone subscribed. And I really literally haven't put out any videos on YouTube of note since then. So I really started to be active on August the 20th, 2016. And I gained over the course of that year um, 1,898 uh, 1, subscribers. And if we look at the amount of subscribers over the course of the year, you can see that it really didn't start to pick up. This is gaining, you know, one or two subscribers a day. It didn't really start to pick up until the end, the very bitter end of the series, right? Um, so let me, let me go to compare metric daily. Let's not do that. Let's go to monthly. So monthly subscriber status gained like 384 in May, back down to 201 in June back up to 272 in July, and then August I was back up to 400, 405. So the very end of a year, meaning that if, if you're anything like me, if your project turns out anything like mine, you're not gonna really see any results until the very end. And there, there's, there's a couple reasons for that. One, I got a lot better at creating content. From August until around the end of April, I had no idea what to do. And I was kind of doing 
um, all these different ideas and all these different things to just kind of throw against the wall and see what worked. And what I figured out was with my creative director in May is there's this thing I do called How to Make, where I deconstruct music and say, here's how to make that type of music. That has been what has actually propelled me forward in terms of views and subscribers. You're not gonna actually know what you're doing for a while, especially if you're like me. I came from no film background, no writing background, only thing I had in my wheelhouse was how to make music. I had to learn how to act on camera. Some of my earlier videos were extremely cringy. Learn how to, you know, be myself on camera. I had to learn how to talk cohesively. I had to learn how to edit. I didn't know anything about video editing. I had no knowledge of Premiere, no knowledge of After Effects. So my initial design for the actual series, you know, like my, my text and my font and the format of everything looked very bad. If you look at this, there's a direct correlation between the number of likes I'm receiving and the number of subscribers I'm gaining. So your content clearly has to be good for people to click the subscribe button because they're also clicking the like button at the same time. And if you compare that to views, let's add that in there. Views and likes are about the same and number of subscribers and views are about the same. So you see this trend, it's an upward trend toward the very end here. So remember when I said that in May, I started to really nail down the concept of what this channel was gonna be about. All right, so ignore the top three entries here because those are all memes. Um, how to write music like Trent Reznor, how to make Rich Chiga glow like that, um, what the heck is Sunbox, Garden Salt, which is also a meme, how to write music like Porter Robinson, how every John Fassel video is made. Um, for, for some reason, this particular song, Lattes and High Rises is super popular. Um, how to kill Yellow Jackets with Gasoline, what is Synthwave, I wrote music like Owl City. These are all how to make specific types of music. That's my point. What I realized in May was that this type of video where it's like, here's how to make some type of music is the popular stuff. The algorithm started to take me more seriously because I was taking myself more seriously. And I hit that 1000, that magical 1000 subscriber number, which there is something about the 1000 subscriber number. Like you can see, as soon as I pass that mark here in May, um, what was the actual day that I passed the mark? So I had to build a social blade in order to be able to illustrate this point because YouTube analytics are trash. So I crossed the threshold for 1,000 subscribers on May the 17th, okay? So if we take a look at the day I crossed 1,000 subscribers through the end of the project, you can see this looks very different than the first graph I showed you. So if we're just looking at views here, the number of views has steadily increased the entire time. The estimated revenue has steadily increased the entire time. The watch time has steadily increased. Likes, every, everything is increasing at a, at a much faster rate, at an exponential rate, I would argue, in terms of subscribers here, when you magically cross that 1,000 number threshold. 60 bucks almost here from my estimated revenue. I made 60% of my revenue in the last quarter of the project. I, I want to dispel the myth that hard work equals reward. It doesn't. And, and there's, there's a lot of people, and that, that's what this shows here. I consider this entire project really difficult work. It wasn't easy uploading a video every day for a year. I'm talking about money here, because I want to dispel the myth that you can just get rich on YouTube by uploading videos consistently. It's not the case. Or at least that's not the case I've experienced. And again here, I'm not saying I deserve money. I'm just trying to tell you what happened. Okay, these are facts, F-A-C-T-S. You cannot argue facts. The fact of the matter is, I uploaded between 700 and 800 videos, right? I made $94.72. That's less than some servers make at a restaurant in a shift. I could go work a shift at Applebee's and I could make more money than that. I obviously am not and did not do this for the cash. I did this because I like doing this. Um, I have a Jones for making small videos. Um, I wanted to learn something new and I can say without a doubt, that I definitely know how to edit things now. I definitely know how to make videos. I definitely know how to make short films. I know what kind of content makes good content to watch. I know how to identify trends. Um, and I know I'm, my, my music itself has grown in terms of quality a great deal. And I'm gonna get more into the quality of my music because again, this project's focus was writing music every day for a year. I wanted to write a song every day for a year. That was the purpose of this project. So I'm gonna do a whole other video that compares the music itself. Um, I'm gonna go into how, like what key everything was in and make a graph of that. I'm gonna go into what tempo things were, what genre things were and make graphs of that. And then I'm gonna do cool things like comparing the number of views I got on each of those songs or the popularity, right? The popularity quotient of those songs. I'm gonna compare that to, you know, the respective genres and that sort of thing. That's gonna be a bigger video. This one really was just showing you the hard numbers, right? The views, the, the comments, the likes, the dislikes. Um, and there's definitely a trend. 
and the trend is about right here shows this curve. I'm at the very bottom of an exponential curve, right? So I think within the next couple of months, things are gonna start to take off in a big way. Should you do this if you're looking to make a lot of money? No. Should you do this if you're looking to get exposure? No. Should you do this if you're a bit nuts and you want to see, you just want some numbers and data and, and you want to, you want to see what you can do. You want to test your limit. Yeah. If you're curious like me, you want to see what your limit is. You want to know what you can do. Yeah, this is for you. Um, but if you're looking to get something out of this, right? if you're looking to gain something from this, like if you're looking to gain money, if you're looking to gain fame and fortune, this is not for you. Um, this is not going to make you famous. It's not going to make you rich. What it will do is it will enrich your life. This project has enriched my life more than anything I've ever done. Uh, I've, I've gained this group of people who are nice and kind and watch my videos and take me seriously. Um, it, so I get validation from that, which some people would argue that's like a narcissistic thing, but whatever, I'm not here to argue that. What I am here to say is I've got these subscribers that are amazing and they send me songs and we talk and have discussions and 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 just like philip defranco says i, I view my comments section like a discussion I, I love youtube as a platform um I, i've gained an auditing sense from how i look on camera how i appear how i talk i talk differently than i did a year ago my family has noticed my brother is like you don't sound the same man because I don't talk the same. Things are different, things have changed. It's been a freeing experience. I think about things less. Like I think about whether or not I should do something less. The only way to do something, make a difference, is to just do it. That's what I'm saying here. Have I reached my limit? I don't know. Uh, the, the data says no. The data says I haven't reached my limit yet because I'm still on a curve. I haven't plateaued yet. Um, have I reached my limit mentally? I've gotten close. I've gotten to the breaking point a few times, but I haven't lost it. Am I at my limit physically? No. I, I can say without a doubt, no. I, I, in fact, I'm in the prime of my life in terms of how I feel in terms of fitness and health. I work out a little bit harder than I used to. I have a job now that keeps me on my feet instead of sitting behind a desk. I'm, I'm further in life than I would have been had I not done this. I think if I hadn't done this project, I wouldn't be where I am right now. And of course you could argue that with anything. If I hadn't bought those shoes, I wouldn't be here with a new pair of shoes. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is I wouldn't have experienced the same amount of personal growth and I wouldn't have discovered as many things about myself if I hadn't done this. That's where I'm gonna end this video. Uh, I hope my rambling made sense. I hope this is helpful to somebody. Um, so basically this is what it looks like to daily vlog for a year. This is what the numbers say about daily vlogging for a year. Uh, part two is going to take a while because, like I said, I'm going to do a whole bunch of analysis about the actual music itself um, and compare that to some of these numbers. I was going to do Sonic Mania today, but it didn't work out because of a couple of bugs in the game when it was re first released for PC. That video is probably going to be Wednesday. Uh, the live stream this past week got taken down, and in reaction to that, I've decided that I'm no longer going to be uploading mainstream music or doing any sort of mainstream music on Coffee Time. Um, if you'd like to submit to Coffee Time, the submissions are still open for this upcoming Friday. Uh, it is underground and unsigned artists only. If I get a copyright strike on a song you've submitted, I will find you. The goal now is to provide a voice and to provide some sort of an outlet for the people who don't have airtime. That's where we're going to make a difference. So if you've got a fellow buddy, a music writer, um, a girlfriend, whoever that writes music, and you want some airtime, submit to Coffee Time. Now is your chance. Until I keel over from a heart attack, because this is gonna kill me eventually, we'll be doing only underground stuff. I'm tired of mainstream capitalist records getting what they think they deserve, getting their slice of the pie. Their time is up, it's our time. Submit to Coffee Time. I'll see you on Friday for sure for that, and I'll see you on Wednesday with another edited video. But between now and then, be nice to each other. My name's Gardner. This is my co-host, Lila. See you Wednesday.